Hi guys, it's Richard from Bagnall and Kirkwood. So today, what we've got for you is a leaky or leaking HW110 Virac air rifle. So this video is also going to be the same for if you've got one of the 44 pistols. It's basically exactly the same, but sort of cylinder, shorter barrel. So what we're going to do is it's just going to be like a minor, minor service. We're just going to look for the leak and we're going to solve it. So first I'm going to take out the dust plug. Oh, I forgot to say, as always, all the spares that we use and things like that are on the website. We'll put the link below. So most common leak on the 110 is always the inlet valve. So to check that, check there's some pressure in the rifle. You can put a balloon over it, see if it expands, things like that. But generally I tend to, we're going to strip this anyway, so I tend to just put my finger over one side. Get some leak detector, which is glorified soap and water. And just spray it into the hole. And hold tight on that side. And we'll just look for any bubbles. And I can already see small bubbles coming up and then a big bubble. I don't know if you're going to pick that, make that out on the camera. But we've found a leak source. So we're just going to take the sensor off just to make it a bit easier to work with. Just gonna blow that out so it's no <laughs> get rid of the excess. Uh, so we know where this one's leaking from. The other place it's ready to leak from is the breather gate, the breather hole on the uh, the gauge itself. So that is that's all there on this one. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit onto that and check it. And that's absolutely fine. That's not leaking there. I tend not to put a lot of water, lot of leak detector on there, because what can happen is it can get sucked in, and then you get might end up with moisture on here. So the third place that we sometimes see leaks is basically this a screw that's in here. So there's a depressurization screw that we're going to use in a little while to depressurize before we service this fill valve end. And sometimes we'll find that that is just just needs a quarter turn. So I'll just explain about that to get to it. Cock the rifle back. Two and a half mil Allen key. This is the one that comes in the box with the rifle or pistol as new. And you won't be able to see it on camera. But when you look yourself, you'll see just like a black bit down here. And you're aiming to try and get into it. So it does usually take a few angles it's not the same angle as the the molding it's kind of like this and it can take a little while to get into there and the screw is also the opposite of what you think so because it's the other way around if you screw it out you're actually screwing it in so don't keep screwing it that way because you'll end up with it in the bowl just follow what we do here and you'll be fine. Oh, so yeah, forgot to mention, you have to have the rifle cocked so that you can put the safety on and then you've got enough uh, distance to get into here. So I've managed to get it in there. You can see the angle that the Allen key's at. So that'll give you a bit of an, ang an idea where you need to be. And because it's screwed from the other way, it's opposite. So I'm going to screw it in. So screwing it in is going to screw it out. And what you're going to do is you can hear a, hear a hiss. Usually it doesn't take very much. There's the hiss and it's depressurizing. So I'll just close it off. So just to give you an idea when we're putting the rifle back together, or if you think this is your leak source, it's a easy fix if it is. You just what I tend to do is just go to it until you can hear the hiss, and then I give it about a half turn, and that's it. No more because I don't want to risk going too far and that going in there. So we'll keep going and we'll take it off.
Okay, so we're now depressurized. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this end cap, but I tend to just clamp further along. I don't like clamping here, so to make that easier, we're just going to remove this. So it's just to remove the barrel band part, it's just a grub screw on both sides. So you don't need to take them all the way out and then that will just slide off and then we're going to remove just this metal part so allen key on the bottom here remove that one and i'm just going to bend that over to the side like that and remove the one underneath. <laughs> That's going to allow us to take the plate out. Next, what I'm going to do is I want to just remove the end clamp, the end part. So I'm going to clamp this into a vise. I've got a, a set up four tubes specifically, but if you're doing it yourself, just be careful. I wouldn't recommend clamping onto the the bridge part you want to be on a, a flat bit here and we're just going to have to get a bar it's probably the same bars i always use just a nice fitting bar and we will have to usually on quite tight so we're probably going to have to hit that with a hammer just to break that uh, break that so we'll be back in a second so that one came off really easy all we need to do is just break that and tamp the seal, locked it in the face and we'll just give it a tap on the hammer and it broke the seal and then unscrewed it a bit with the, the bar. And what you've got here is your fill valve assembly. So if you are leaking out that breather hole, where's he gone? Uh, there he is, yep. So if you are leaking out of that one, you're gonna have to take the gauge out. We're not gonna do it on this video. If you look below, I'll put a link to the HW100 video and that shows change in that so that gives you an idea that seals one of the ones that's inside the kit uh, it's a middle size one which is that one there but what we're going to be doing here is just replacing the ones that are causing the issues so it's the one that's in there and we're gonna you get two of those in the kit so we're only gonna need one of those and we're just going to replace this one on the outer again you get two so we're gonna to have to remove this one so it's i uh, use just basically big big screwdriver but from factory these are tight in so you want to make sure you've got something that's broad i see loads of these where they've been chipped off because people have had a go at them uh, with wrong size screwdrivers and stuff like that and i'm going to put this into a vise because it's like i say they are on tight there we go so Oh, it's still on there. So in here you're going to have the end cap, you're going to have a spring, then you're going to have a piston to simmer the HW100, not the same but similar, and the o-ring and the o-ring retainer, so I'm just going to take it the o-ring off so we'll go pop the old one off we're going to take a bit of molly coat molly coat 111 and we're just going to put a bit of that on your fingers and then we're going to replace that o-ring onto the retainer there we go and basically the way that sits is that sits on the piston that seals up against this bit so we're just going to drop first of all just the o-ring part down into there we're going to make sure it's seated correctly drop in the next part the piston make sure that's okay spring over the top and then we're going to go back in so i've also came across these where customers have re 
or users have re uh, threaded these incorrectly, so you just have to make sure you don't cross thread it as it's going in. Oh. And it doesn't need to be anywhere near as tight as Virac put it in the factory. Just gonna replace that ordering on the outside, it's probably okay. But we've gone past it so it's always good good practice to do that. Bit of the molly coat on. The outside done. Pop the cylinder back on. Just going to pop that back into the cylinder vise and just give it a quick nip. There we go, so what you see on the stickers were more or less back to where we were originally. Take that off so it looks a bit uh, a bit better. There we go now, so what I'm going to do now is re-find that position on the screw. And I'm going to screw the screw back into position by screwing it out. So turn it anti-clockwise. So I've just given that half a turn, it might not even be enough. What I'm gonna do is just go and, in fact it wasn't even half a turn, it was about a quarter of a turn. I'm gonna go and fill it up. If leak starts straight away, I'm just gonna nip that up a little bit while I'm back with a dive bottle. So I'll be back in a second. So we'll fill that up to just under 200 bar there. It's gonna be put on a 24 hour leak test. So what we're gonna do is rebuild. Just going to pop this back in here have to cock the rifle or pistol if it's a 110 and then hold the trigger down and just push it in the back there so it's in the position then the small old club uh, screw or allen bolt anyway back in there then we've got the big one Back there as well, just going to decock this rifle. Then we're going to put the barrel band back on as well. So just slide that into place where it sits. So if you get this wrong, you might have to move it. When it sits going into the stock, you might have to move it a little bit backwards, a little bit forwards. But that's where it sits there. We're just going to do up those grub screws on the band. I like to do this a little bit at a time just to centralise it a little bit more. That's them sorted. So that's everything done on this one ten. I hope. I hope tomorrow it's all fine. Not leaking. The customer can be happy. So we'll uh, So that's everything done on this one ten here. Um like I said we're gonna leave it on a 24 48 hour leak test to make sure there's no no other leaks. Uh double check that everything we've done is fine. Uh, so as always I'll put the link below to the parts, I'll put the link below to the 100 video I've already done for changing that o-ring that's inside the gauge there. Like I said, I don't recommend doing it unless you are leaking out at that point. Um, so as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video hopefully.